out of life. Go out to a movie. Welcome to the Red Rabbit Drive-In Theater with my co-host, Slinky Jello, and yours truly, Mick Soiler. (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit, that's amazing. (laughs) Just run with it, man, because that's funny. (laughs) Should we we leave it like that? (laughs) Yeah, that's funny, dude. Mick Soiler. That's like a wrestler name, bro. (laughs) Exactly. Weighing in at 216 pounds. Fuck it, you know. <laughs> so, I can't, now, right. now I kind of want, I kind of want to start doing the proudly presents thing, like make that more of a thing on the show now. Like, yeah, yeah you know, that'd be kind of cool. Like, you know, it's it's kind of an homage because we love Demon Knight so much. Oh, you know. Movie. Oh my God, this movie. So, all right, you mentioned like, it last week that we we're going to cover Demon. Uh, yes. Anybody who listens. Anybody who is stuck listening to the show, uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about fucking movies we want to talk about. So sorry for you. Um, That's how we roll. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's for the kids, man. It's for the kids. But, uh, yeah. but no, Demon Knight, man. Demon Knight. Um, holy hell. I, this, <clears throat> yeah. uh, it's so hard because this is just one of those movies. It's kind of like Dark Man where – the moment the title gets spoken out loud, you know, you don't know where to begin because it's just such an amazing film. I mean, as in all, it's just great. You know, like, and it's funny because our show, when we're talking about a movie, we do not talk about the flaws. We don't talk about like any of that, which I think is great. Yeah. The thing about it, what I, would like to do with this is if you know spoilers if someone's listening to this and they've never seen the movie i want to instill like that kind of sense of wonder and that sense of i have to see this movie like you know exactly. like I, I wish i could have people see it through our lens you know kind yes. of yes um tales from the crypt all right i'm i'm a horror guy man i'll i love tales from the crypt i adore tales from the crypt uh, the show in the late 80s and 90s I, I was raised yeah i tell people i was raised by yeah. betsy palmer and the crypt keeper <laughs> exactly uh, <clears throat> it's true it's friday nights man i used to watch tales from the crypt <laughs> so we, we can discuss the show on another episode because there's just so much wonderful stuff about that show um all these, yes all these different actors you yeah, never knew who was gonna pop that- that's definitely a future episode for sure. Absolutely. Talking about it because I like, seen that set in your house, buddy, and uh, yeah, we're gonna dissect that fucker. Oh um, yeah, that's the good stuff. I hold it and I'm like, uh huh, uh huh, like in man, Walmart. I can't wait until Waylon gets old enough, man. Like I, I, I like because I'm gonna introduce him to that TV series for I sure. I showed it to my daughter. She fucking loved it. She was I like, mean, These are cool, man. Like. Well, I, I, somebody was saying to me, like, uh, it was like a few months ago. No, it was actually last year, I think. Um, last Christmas. Like, yeah, I watched a couple episodes of, you know, Tales of the Crypt. And it doesn't really hold up for me anymore. I'm like, well, I definitely disagree. Some of them are dated. But some of them yeah. are. You know, yeah, listen, no- you put cell phones in some of them, you'll be fine. Like, come on. I, I think it's – I think the, the only – thing that the show really suffered from is um the you know basically just the camera work then you know because you know what i mean because like when you watch it like you can tell like the kind of cameras they were using then i don't know it's it's hard to describe because it's like okay some of them were quick and dirty that's the best way to describe it um but see what what i really respected about that show is 
I think damn near all the stories, about probably ninety five percent of them, were lifted right from the comics, man. Like I uh, just that's what I heard. Yeah, that's, really good stuff. That's what I heard. So yeah. <clears throat> well, the show was but, got so popular, it, it blew up, man. Everybody, you know, they were making Crypt Keeper action figures and stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, because you had Richard Donner, Walter Hill, Robert yeah. Zemeckis, Joel Silver, these gigantic names in Hollywood that were endorsing the show. Mm. You know, you had like, some big name but, actors, but then you had unknowns too. Because like, uh, you, uh, what is it? You and McGregor, Obi Wan, our Lord and Savior. He's yep. in an episode. Terry yeah. Hatcher, and Danny, yeah. uh, Daniel Craig. That's right. That's right. Dan Aykroyd's in one. Yeah, he Dan plays Aykroyd. a general in Yellow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he court martials his son. Um, yep. I I love the show. I have such fond memories of the show. But it I, got I, so big, where they made a movie, Tales from the Crypt movie. Yes. And uh, I didn't see. I didn't. I didn't know about the movie. I didn't hear a single anything about the movie. My mom was like, "Hey, let's go to the movies." I'm like, "Ah, oh, what are you gonna say? Tales from the Crypt." What? That's Tales awesome. Crypt. So I went in totally blind, man. And <clears throat> you know, the movie starts, and it starts just like the show. It goes through the house with the Danny Elfman music playing and everything. Oh, yeah. And it, you have the Crypt Keeper saying his, you know, hokey stuff, which some of it's funny, some of it's lame. But when that fucking movie starts, dude, and it just says Demon Knight, and, uh, man, <laughs> it's, I don't know. You get oh, like transported to that world and you're there. Like, it's true, man. It's the atmosphere of that movie. You know what I mean? Like that's that has a lot to do with its appeal to me. Like the the atmosphere. I love the way it looks. Yes, yeah, aesthetically, it's a beautiful movie with the purples and the blues and stuff. It's oh, gorgeous. Yeah. It, it has really like a 35 on Rotten Tomatoes. I was like, fuck your mother and her sister, bro. Seriously, that's like, why I'm a critic, dude. I hate that. I I yeah, I do hate critics, but I I specifically would put Rotten Tomatoes on the top of my shit list, like mm-hmm. because Rotten Tomatoes can suck my balls, dude. Like, yes, yeah, fuck them. Like, yeah, and, and it just annoys me because, like, you know, like nowadays when you buy a Blu-ray, mm-hmm. it'll say graded, you know, by Rotten Tomatoes, like yeah, highest number. Like, I don't. Care. It infuriates me that they put that on a fucking movie case. I really don't like that. That's very uh, – it's it's not right, I don't think. Well, all right. When I first saw the movie, right, the writers, I guess, did the old switcheroo. Yeah. Because when you see Breaker you – now, Breaker's in a car, you know, and you hear Filter. Oh, God, the soundtrack. We can, ah, yes. Oh. It really sets the tone. That that song from Filter, Hey Man, Nice Shot, really, it's awesome. Awesome, man, you know, because it adds to the, the adrenaline of the car, you know. Breaker looks yeah. like a bad guy, dude. Like, yeah. You know, he's roughed up and, you know. Uh, he's old. You know, like. Uh, jacket. Yeah, uh, jacket. He's got, you know, he's got the five o'clock shadow, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally, he's the bad guy. Yeah, I forget what kind of car he's in, but then you sh- then they show the collector. It's Billy Zane. He's got a yeah. cowboy hat on. He's clean shaven. He's got kind of a cocky smile on his face, and he's driving that Pontiac. I think it's a Pontiac Firebird, I think, or GTO, something like that. Hauling ass. Just I I don't even know where to start on this movie, man, because like I don't want to like crawl through it, but it starts out with a bang straight up, man. Like, absolutely like it and as it should i i mean you know yeah i mean because you made a good point you brought up something we we talked about this before mm-hmm. that i do love the contrast between william sadler and billy zane yes. because the way yes. billy zane is dressed you would think he's the protagonist yes exactly like i thought he was like because of the cowboy hat i thought maybe he was like a texas ranger or something yeah, pursuing wearing, this guy yeah so yeah like mm-hmm. it, you know you would you would like i I love that they, i think that's brilliant you know and then it yeah. turns out no william sad spins the car he's shooting it looks like a fucking uh winston repeater 
big car crash. You don't know what happened to the the second guy, and then you see Breaker trying to steal a car. So you're like, okay, this is the bad guy. You know? Yeah. But oh man, it's when they get to the hotel is when uh <sighs> when that movie pops off, and I don't mean when it starts. I mean when shit starts going down. You know. Well, yeah. why wait? And he, pow! It, oh. Awesome. I'm sitting awesome. here doing sound effects and people are like, what is that fucking guy doing? Um, <laughs> but it's awesome, man. It's awesome. Then you find out, uh, oh, that's the bad guy. Um, it, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, that sheriff um, wanted to bring we're him all in. this when we go downtown. Yeah. 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 We'll take care of all this. We're going to go downtown. We're going to sort this shit out. Shit out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Oh man. Well, I, I mean, um, I was, I was telling, um, my buddy Greg today from where with cinema, I told him we're, we're doing demon night and he got fucking stoked. It, yeah. He's like, that's a I great movie. That movie. Yeah. We're like, <laughs> you, you are one of the reasons why we're doing this. <laughs> you know, like that's awesome. It, that's awesome. It, it's, <laughs> it's such a, it's such a great, it's such a great movie. Like, I um I remember the first time I saw actually okay you said the first time you saw it your mom took you to go and see it went to the theater and saw it yeah totally blind I totally no blind. idea yeah. no it was like idea January '95 I think yeah. oh shit wow that that must have been the same month that I, obviously the same month that I went to go see it because um I remember I think I saw a trailer for it. I know that I knew about it a couple of weeks in advance, at least, and I was super amped about it because okay. my dad always let me watch the TV series. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I used to watch it with my mom, so we were Tales from the Crypt junkies, man. So it was yeah. really cool to be able to see it with her. Same here. Yeah, because I, I, I think it, it was it came on at eleven o'clock on Wednesday nights on HBO. I it came. Uh, Came on on Friday for us because that was my big Friday thing. I was like, yeah, I'd fucking get ice cream and shit oh, and fucking cool. watch Tales from the Crypt. Crazy. Like it was on a school night for me because like I remember my dad would be like, OK, I'll let you stay up late for Tales from the Crypt. Well, you got to figure you probably had different cable carriers, man. Yeah. Until, you know, um, <clears throat> but like, all right, when your first clue to Billy Zane being the bad guy is when he gets, he jumps through that fucking window. He hisses and then jumps through the window and you're like, what the fuck? What is that? And he does that thing with the cowboys. I remember my mom and I were the only ones laughing in the theater. Like we were cracking the fuck up (laughs) because it's hysterical. Fuck this cowboy shit. You know, I think, I think that, um, I think, uh, I think me and my dad were like, I, I'm I'm almost for sure because I don't remember anybody else laughing at that either. I remember me and my dad laughed about that. Like yeah. so, yeah. The gallows I, humor. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I definitely, I definitely <laughs> can relate to that because um, we we went to like I remember being so hyped going and seeing oh, it. Like, and it, it, it strange was, seeing a movie that you're not you go in blind and then you fucking oh, love the yeah. shit out of it. So the only difference is your uh, experience was good. My experience is fucking bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, brother. It's all but like, good. <laughs> all right. Well, again, man, I'm trying to think. I guess just maybe hit on the cast. The casting is really well. The movie's well casted. Like, I think everybody plays their part spot on, man. Well, um, and Chris Dickerson directed it, too. Um, I don't know if he directed any episodes prior on the show. Yeah. I think that it was his first time doing anything Tales from the Crypt related, but I do remember watching interviews with him and him saying that he was a massive fan of the series. So, Mm. you know, go figure. Yeah, you know. It's funny. That was supposed to be um, part of a trilogy, Demon Knight. Yeah. I think we talked about this before. There was another... We, Either we the did. sequel was supposed to take place in New Orleans. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> and then that fell through. It wasn't intended to be. Um, 
else from the crypt at first, but yeah, uh, it was just for, yeah. whatever reason they decided like no, we're gonna make it tales from the crypt. Well, it they sat on the desk for like two years or something like that. It yeah, was, yeah, dude. It, the, the movie has one of those like weird kind of <laughs> journeys to make it to film. Um, yeah, and for those that don't know, the key makes an appearance in Bordello of Blood. Um, That's right. And I guess it originally it was supposed to be a trilogy about the key. It was supposed to be, you know, something twisted and macabre about this key in each uh, each chapter. But Bordello of Blood, uh, mm, not a big fan. Uh, I'm not here. <laughs> it's it's okay. It's a weird yeah, movie. It's, it's kind of... Yeah, it's it's not awful, but it's like Dennis Miller is not my ideal choice for a protagonist in a, yeah. you know, <clears throat> well, yeah. I kept getting upset with him. Cause he would improvise all this to, all the time. And they were like, Dennis, read your fucking lines. And yeah, Dennis Miller, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I don't, I, I don't hate the guy, but I wasn't like, Ooh, Dennis Miller, you His know, football like, commentary was hysterical. I'll give him that. That was yeah. really funny. Yeah. yeah, and William Sadler made a cameo in yes, Bordello. Yeah, like I, I can't remember <clears throat> what character he he played, but he he had a cameo. He's a cameo. I well, I I liked him from Bill and Ted because he played yeah. Death, you know. So I just I've been a William Sadler fan ever since. But Demon Knight is what made me a Billy Zane fan. I don't care. I like Billy Zane, man. I think. No, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you, dude. Like I I mean because <clears throat> it. Though, because when you brought up William Sadler, it made me think. It was like, when was the first time I I I got introduced? I mean, it had to have been the TV series. Uh, with it's with either the, that or Bill and Ted for me. It was either that or Bill I, and Ted? For me, because I didn't see Bill and Ted until later. Mm. So mm. I'm almost 100% positive it was the TV series and Trespass okay. were my two introductions. To, no. No, I know. <laughs> Fucking hard to kill with Steven Seagal. Oh yeah, god damn it, Kelly LeBrock. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that that was uh, that was my that was the first time I ever yeah. saw William Sadler. That's right. You know, like All right. but, but <clears throat> Demon Knight. Here we go. Let's see. Jada Pinkett Smith. Um, I had a little crush on her after this movie. Like I wish she had hair, but I mean she's, I, she's really I, pretty, man. You know, she looked good with with short hair too. Dick yeah. Miller, of course. Ah, uh, rest in peace, Dick Miller. Yes. Uncle Willie, nothing gets you fucked up faster. I fucking, dude, this movie's great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, well honorable is, mention John Larroquette in in the beginning. That's uh, right, that's right. He's the dead body, he's the body in the tub. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Oh, man, Which, I love John Larroquette, you know. <clears throat> but, I, all right, so let's see. CCH Pounder. I yep. love when she holds her stump up. And she's like, this is me giving you the finger. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thomas Hayden Church. Yes, dude. I love him as Sandman. I don't care what anybody says. He plays a good Sandman. Uh, yeah. Such a dick as Roach. What a douche, man. God. Oh, God Roach is like, evening hotel, people. Uh, <laughs> get that pussy off the table. Fuck it. She jumps off the oh, table. Oh, God, God dude. Oh. <laughs> Bro, I was talking to the cat. But uh, no, so, well, here's the thing. I always thought it was kind of cool that what Demon Knight did, because when you watch the show, it's these little tales um, <clears throat> of just people, you know, doing others wrong and getting their comeuppance and, uh, you know, <clears throat> little small stories. Demon Knight, it's about uh, these demons taking over the world, man. Like, <clears throat> yeah. you know, it, it upped the ante. Um like I said, we're probably going to be jumping all over the place, but when you hear the story that Breaker tells her about that key where he's yeah. like, it was given to me during World War One. Uh, <clears throat> World War One. What? Hey, whoa, shit, Breaker's been alive for a long time. And some of the blood in there is from Jesus? He's like, some of it. Most of it belonged to a soldier. Da, 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 da. Really good, man. I was, I was just like, whoa. I really, I, I, I really enjoyed that movie. It, it's so great, like, because I remember, um, you know, because obviously you and I were 80s kids, but Absolutely. we also 
grew up a big a big part of our lives in the 90s too mm-hmm. and we're that weird generation like it's yeah, kind of strange. yeah we were yeah. um but getting that issue of fangoria that had that whole centerpiece on demon night yeah. and just again once again we should probably warn everybody we do jump around we stick All to the same place. but All we place. jump around you know like because it's our it's shit. Just, <laughs> exactly it's, our shit. It's, it's everything related to the film but we're telling it in our own way yeah, you know in the show what we did so you know um, yeah like <clears throat> but but like uh i remember um them like you know, talking about the prosthetic work with the demons and stuff like that, and the issue. And their green fucking eyes, their beady green eyes. They were yeah. so creepy, dude. Oh, that used to freak me out. It used to freak me out. Really? And when they poured the blood out of the key, it made a seal. So you were like, "What? That movie's wild, yeah. dude. The movie's crazy. There's so much crazy shit happening in that movie." And, and you uh, know what? weird because people were like this would not normally be a tales from the crypt episode which is true but mm-hmm. for some odd reason it works it just works as as, as a that, movie. yeah <clears throat> absolutely yeah. um like it's it's just you know it's not your standard you know tales from the crypt story it's it's very very different which i think it was brilliant because it showed that like okay like you were saying, you gotta up the ante. Mm-hmm. So yeah. let's let's do something that we would normally do on the TV series, and it fucking yeah. worked. It hit a home run. You because know? It, it it opened up the spectrum, or it uh, you know broadened the horizon a little bit for Tales from the Crypt, and it showed you that Tales from the Crypt could be almost anything, instead of the guy who killed his boss and now his boss's zombies coming to get him, or you know uh, Joe Pesci. Was it, just, was it just Joe Pesci that dated the twins and then they cut him in half? <laughs> fucking, like, fucking, yeah. The show is wild, man. I love those shows. Um, I, I do too. I do too. Mm-hmm. Like, But it showed it in a different <laughs> setting and just, ah, man, like a, it's – the movie's really good. It's a lot of people <clears> – <throat> I don't think a lot of people have actually seen it because Tales from the Crypt isn't relevant anymore. So people, they're like, Tales from the Crypt, <laughs> Demon Knight, what the hell is that? Um yeah, man, wow. it, it's it's such a shame because like that's and that's... see here, Billy Zane, bro, Billy mm-hmm. Zane, he owns this movie because him and Breaker totally own this movie. Um, yeah, <clears throat> Billy Zane has to play all these different parts. He has to be charming, charismatic, but he has to be cunning and like malicious. Uh, the thing about I, one of the things I like about it is when he tempts the people in the hotel, when he, uh, yeah. he's showing them, you know, what they could have, blah, blah, blah. And now he just wants the fucking key, man. Like he's going <laughs> to let his demons fucking eat you. Uh, oh, man, it's so I was great. happy when Roach got it. I was yeah, you fucker. <laughs> I, yeah, I love, I love when he says to him, when he makes a deal with Roach and he goes, uh, he was like, oh, well, I, I, I something to the effect of like, I want to, I, I want to kill everybody. And he was like, if it makes you feel good, do it. And oh, he's God, like, what a dude. If it makes you feel good, do it. Do it. Yeah. Thank you, Roach. <laughs> but the way he plays it, Billy, he, he runs up to him and he's fucking, he's all giddy. And then I think when he's talking to Jada Pinkett, is it, is it him or no? I forget who he's talking to. The, he, the sponge pops out of his mouth. Yeah, that, like, that's just a cool little touch. Like it's, you know. Yeah, wait, wait. yeah he, he said that he improv that idea with with the sponge. Awesome. Man. It's awesome. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Billy Zane's. I thought he was a great actor, man. I really did. Like he can play I, a. Billy Zane's underrated, man. Him he, and William Sadler both are very, very underrated. I can't wait till Bill and Ted comes out because it's gonna be great. It's oh, gonna be epic. It's, it's funny because you like we were both going to mention two new movies that have William Sadler. I'm really stoked about that grudge remake. Like, all right, all right, that's the second time you told me about this and I don't, I've, I've heard nothing and I run a horror page. So like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of shocked too. We'll, we'll definitely get into that too. Cause like, I'll, I'll, I'll like, I'll tell you more about it. Cause yeah. It, 
Remember that movie, uh, The Eyes of My Mother? The Eyes of My Mother? Yeah. I don't that, know. The Eyes of Laura Mars. I remember that with Faye Dunaway. No, not that one. Not that one. No, this, yeah. is, this is way newer. I it's to... a very weird, strange horror film. There's a movie called Mother with Jennifer Lawrence in it. No, not not that oh, okay. one. Okay, all right. Then, no, I've... I've... It's, yeah, it's, it's called The Eyes of My Mother. Um, if I sit here and guess all night, maybe I'll fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Lacey, <laughs> when we first started dating, we watched it, and yeah. You know, like it, it's 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 a weird, it's a really good movie, but it's fucking weird. Oh, and okay. that's directing the Grudge remake. So okay, I okay. Saw the why are they remaking the Grudge? Because Juan is really good, and then I, I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't know. Like um, I the guess Grudge is freaky to me. I think just uh, the wait, you see the trailer for this new one? It's got uh, Jay in it too. It's got who? It's got Lynn Shay in it too. Oh, okay. Robert Shay's wife. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Okay. These movies and Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, like yeah. her and William Sadler are in it, and I'm like, okay, sold. Well, I was sold by yeah. William Sadler, to be completely honest with you. Like, yeah, he's I'm, another one. I'll watch him make a ham sandwich, bro. Like, yeah. he's just cool. <laughs> he's just really cool. Every show, I'm gonna name an actor who I'd watch make a ham sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, he, when he popped up in that Shia LaBeouf movie, Eagle Eye, like, he That's was... Right. That's right. He was really, like, the only thing that I got excited about. I'm like, oh, shit, William Sadler plays Shia LaBeouf's dad. That's crazy. You yeah, know? Like, that movie is cool. So, all right, let's see. Um, <clears throat> I, I, again, spoilers, man. If you haven't seen the movie, fucking go watch it. Um, Seriously, man, this movie is, like, what, 25 years old? I th- well, 95. Uh, yeah, I think so. Like, God damn it, I'm old. Fuck. Uh, I have to get up three times a night and take a piss. Jesus Christ. That's um, so funny. Oh, man. It's terrible. <laughs> when you said that, it made me think of a rock. When um, <laughs> he's talking about John Mason, <laughs> he was like, he goes, uh, what was it? He was talking to John Spencer's character, and he was like, are you kidding me, John Mason? I have to get up three nights, three times a night to take a piss. piss? Yeah, it sucks, man. It sucks. God damn it. My prostate must be the size of a go- uh, fucking grapefruit. Um, oh, yeah. Both. <laughs> just terrible. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a good flick, man. And it's funny because the way it ends is almost like how it began. There's another collector and there's another breaker type. Yeah, you which know. is Jada Pinkett and the Demon Knight. Yeah, it's. I I always, you know, to me, like if you were to give a horror education of the nineties, mm-hmm. Demon Knight would be at, on the top of that list. Like there will it, be a quiz, and Demon yeah, Knight will be on it. Yeah, it, it would be like okay. Say if you got top ten, it would be within the first five in yeah. the top ten category of like must see horror. Of the 90s. like and see, Demon Knight, when it came out in 95, that was a year before Scream came out. And Scream, yep. Scream changed everything. Scream, <laughs> yep. you know, it, it, Scream even changed the aesthetic of the horror movie poster, if you think about it. Yeah. Because that's when they started doing, you know, the cast and the threat in the it, just Scream. Oh, man, that's another one we should uh, discuss. Yeah, we're going to do Scream as oh, well. Scream. Yeah. I, I do, but, too. I love it. Like, um, but I think Demon Knight was one of the last horror movies of the '90s that was totally off the wall. Like, yeah, you know, absolutely. Because it's completely original, man. If you think about yeah, it, I mean, it wouldn't have fit the '80s aesthetic either. Like, as far as yeah. like the subject, I don't know. Like, because Demon Knight was definitely very, very different. Like, yeah, I think I, I like to say it's a comic book movie, and I say that a lot, but. Well, and again, that's great because it's a Tales from the Crypt movie. So it, yeah, you know, I, I mean, it, it kind of, I mean, but yeah, I mean, in a way, it kind of is a comic book movie. It's, it's, it's over the top. Like the characters are, you either love them or you hate them. And yeah, it's, you know, and it's nonstop. The movie has, it goes by at a clip. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's a fun ride. Like it's mm. got good character development in it for what it is. 
especially yeah, you, you know you like feel uh, for the dude yeah yeah you know uh, absolutely like and um, he finally gets to rest like he's <clears throat> it sucked seeing him go because you're like i was so mad dude yeah but you're so, like rest in so peace mad. my dude rest in peace my yeah. dude like exactly. you've earned it brother You've earned it. <laughs> I, I, you know, that was another one of like, you know, I told you like my Danny Glover moments at Saw in the theater. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, like when, when William Sadler's character died, I was so pissed off. I'm like, yeah. this is bullshit, man. Like, why do they have to kill Breaker, dude? Come yeah. on. Because you feel for the guy and you, you see him and he's, you know, he's in control. There's certain parts where he's in control, but it's, he's... He he acts so desperate. He he exudes this like desperation where he's just I'll try fucking anything to keep these goddamn demons away from this key. Like, yeah. It's that's, and that's you don't want to see him fail, man. Like not no, at all. Man, you know? And and that's that's what he. I love his character. Like it's I don't think I don't think I've ever said this, and it's kind of a shocker that I haven't. But I would put Breaker among like some of my favorite protagonists of all time as far as fictional characters like right. i just enjoy Definitely. his character like i i love like, and like you said i love i love how his desperation becomes a heroic act like yeah yeah absolutely <clears throat> you know, and and i i love how self-sacrificing his character is like that's just he's so- all squirrely and he's sweaty and he's dirty <laughs> and you're just like dude this yeah. guy's been fucking hell no pun intended but like yeah get just you know that's why when he passes away i'm like get your rest dude like like i, I like breaker yeah. breaker's my favorite character but billy zane his performance just fucking goes over a little bit he's got the edge on william sadler I, i'll definitely say it because i mean but they like, both play their characters well like they yeah absolutely, they absolutely. Yeah, they own them. Well, I mean, because it's like if you're an actor, you know, me, like personally, like let's say if I got the script. Nick's an actor, ladies and gentlemen, by the way. Yeah, oh, yes. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, we didn't go into our, uh, you know, why we get to do this. It's good. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, but I mean, as, as me speaking as an actor, if I got the script for Demon Knight, I would obviously want the role of the collector you know what i mean because if you if that dialogue fun. in there like yeah. it's like that's that's i mean that's the that's the character that i think almost any actor would want to play you yeah, know you so like top you have to be like a jack nicholson type kind of you know yeah pretty much yeah. pretty much and it, it would just be a fun role you know like I, I i you know i would totally play a character like that in a heartbeat so, you know so if somebody was like it, it looks I got, fun, man, you know, and he has some of the best lines, too, like. Yeah, you totally do, like, if somebody handed me a script, like, hey, I want you to play this character, and it was something like that, I'd be like, dude, I'm in, oh, you know, totally shit, in. oh, I love it, I love it, I love it's it, it's so you know? awesome, well, don't get me wrong, <laughs> I don't want to undersell Breaker's character, either, that would probably be my other option, you know, like, if they were like, hey, we've got all these these characters pick one you know pick which whatever one you want I'd at probably, first sight it would yeah yeah at first sight it'd be you know collector, collector. but be like hey i like this breaker guy too well, you know read the script you know i don't read the script script reads me uh <laughs> yeah. we gotta do tropic thunder one day i yeah. fucking love that movie um <laughs> but yeah no upon you know like say you give it like a second read or a third read then you're like fucking breaker breakers the the tragic breakers the heartbreaker ah see what i did there um, ah yeah nice. ah, yeah. <laughs> but like yeah upon you know further reading um breaker jumps out man like i love his character i love his yeah character. i i mean that's that's what i'm saying like i think i'd be a little bit conflicted it's like hey which one do you want to play breaker or the yeah. collector like, oh that's that's a tough choice <laughs> All right, yeah. so now uh, – go ahead. Sorry. Like their strengths, you know? Like, so that's what makes it such a difficult decision. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a standout role for both of them, actually. I think they both shine. I think so, too. 
Yeah. I think so. Well, because you got to think, too. I thought about this. Th- that came out during an era where both main characters could still shine in their own way. Yeah. You don't yeah. really see that that much nowadays in films. It's usually one. I mean, well, I guess it depends on your perspective. Like, like if me and you were to, you know, to dissect the Dark Knight, the Joker is not going to be our only takeaway from that film. But oh no, because no. I like Two Face, man. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, but a majority of the majority of of of, of movie watchers they're instantly going to latch on to one character. That's just how, how it goes normally. Somebody like you and I and, and certain people that we know. We're comic fans too. So we, we you know, yeah. can't hurt your chances. Fuck, you <laughs> Two-Face any yeah. day, man. And he owns him as Two-Face. I love the <laughs> way he plays Two-Face. You That's, know. oh, yeah. Aaron, Aaron Eckhart was great as, as Harvey Dent in Two-Face. But yeah, I, I, I mean, but yeah, it's that was during a time, you know, because the 80s and the 90s, both of those eras, where both characters, like the 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 protagonist and the antagonist, got to stand out. It wasn't like just, oh, you know what? I know he's supposed to be the good guy, but I'm, you know, I think the bad guy's cooler. You know, well, like, see, like even 89 Batman, Michael <laughs> Keaton is real subtle about a, about his performance in that movie but it really comes through like i love his portrayal of batman bruce wayne and then you got jack nicholson who i, I call him the cocaine joker because he's fucking yeah. chewing the scenery man um but then again batman returns michelle pfeiffer she stands out and, and danny devito is the penguin dude i'll argue anybody i love his version of the penguin oh i agree like, oh, i agree so good. i think you could go back and forth between danny devito and michelle pfeiffer honestly oh god batman returns son it's coming it's coming oh uh, yes it is yes it is. <laughs> you know, <laughs> as we were talking about with demon knight <laughs> like well come on uh, we gotta get to the soundtrack brother because that's what oh shit we're gonna we're gonna do it now <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, I'm just saying. I think that's where this is gonna fucking pow. Cause the I wore that yeah. disc out, dude. Like, oh my shit. god, you and me both, dude. Oh yeah. my god, so good. Like, oh, yeah, like, um, but no, I mean, like the the other thing about the movie, as I you know said earlier, but I love the atmosphere. I fucking yeah. love the atmosphere in this film. Mm-hmm. Like, I you know. You know, not not taking away the from the regular score of the film. The regular score is really good, but just the artist contributed part is just. It's one of those few movies where you have like the artists contributing to the soundtrack that overshadow the score itself. You know, yeah. like. And I was going to mention. You hear the song because it wasn't one of those soundtracks where they played <clears throat> a couple songs and they threw all this other shit on it and, to sell it. You hear the songs yeah. in the movie, like when he's talking to Jada. Yeah. That's the grave diggers playing, son. Like, yeah, that's yeah, so buddy. Ah, twenty <laughs> hundred suicide bitches. Oh, oh great, <laughs> love it. Woo, I know, I know it's the grave diggers, but Wu Tang's up in that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but no, it's it's ah uh, man again. The the ah. movie is amazing, nonetheless. Like I mean, I I think as far as the movie goes, I think we just about covered everything except for I don't think we really talked too much about Ernest Dickerson because he went on to he's he went on to have still a very successful career. He directed a lot of pivotal episodes of the Walking Dead TV series. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did Is that. Is that the guy that was stealing the mail? Which one? Or which? All right, never. I'm sorry. I was thinking of one of the actors. Um, what's his name? Some uh, Kaiser. The guy that did the voice in uh, Roger Rabbit, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Breeze, Eddie. Yeah. Oh, damn. Oh man. His name. <laughs> I forgot his name. Polly. Wasn't his name Polly in the movie? I think. I, I don't. May, maybe. But yeah, he was stealing their mail. Like, and, uh, it's Polly, you know, like, uh, yeah, I think it is Polly because he got fired from the the, uh, service, yeah. the postal service, which is funny because I remember when they went up to the attic 
All their mails up there. <laughs> your mails up Son there. of a bitch was stealing our mail. Fucking CCH yeah. pound money. And then he had that whole fucking uh, chest full of weapons. Mm. Oh which, yeah, that's right. Because he was gonna. Go I can't believe it. we never brought that up before. That's such a that's such yeah, a great. Actually. Yeah, you know, like. <laughs> Uh, it's like yeah, real yeah, dark just, humor part of the movie. Like, oh shit. Like, yeah, I know, right? You're like, damn, man, that's that's dark. <laughs> that's you know. So basically, that uh, the the prostitute was the only shot of Polly of having a really normal life. Oh god, that's too funny. Go, wait, wait, I forget what she says. Oh, I should go give him a freebie or something. Go give him a blowjob for free. I forget what she says. Oh yeah, CCH powder does. Yeah, that's great. Two people <laughs> fucking him. <laughs> <laughs> just what you need. Someone else fucking him. Like just. Yeah. Oh man, there's a lot of good lines in that movie, man. Straight up. Um, really I will is. say, Jada Pinkett when she, you don't know what's going on because you see Billy Zane's. You know, he's doing the enticement, you know, trying to trying to sell her, tempt her. Great and she's scene. not saying anything. You know, she's being real Ooh. quiet. And then all of a sudden, she spits what's left of the blood right in his fucking face. Yeah. It's you know, ah, good stuff. You know, you know, what one of my favorite parts about that scene is, though, when he's trying to seduce her. And, she and he goes, good in her underwear, son. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, um, but when. He's trying to seduce her, and he goes, you know, do you think you could find it in your heart to l- 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 me? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a nice touch, man, because he's a fucking demon. Like, ah, it's good oh, stuff. It's so great, because I could l- 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 you. <laughs> it's nice so touch. awesome. You know. I fucking love Billy Zane, man. <laughs> like, I, I don't understand why he's not, like, a heavy hitter in Hollywood still. Like, Two words. I think you know what I'm going to say. I think I might know too. The Phantom. Oh, shit. They, <laughs> yeah. they were going to, listen, they were going to do a franchise. They had it all planned out, man. But listen, I, Treat Williams, that I, that's a miscast in The Phantom. I don't find him threatening as, as Drax, you know, I don't. <laughs> I like Treat Williams, but and they fucked up and they took the Phantom out of his element and sent him to the city. You can't yeah. do that's like putting the shadow in the modern age. No, won't work. Won't work. Um, leave him in the jungle. He's the fucking ghost who walks. Okay. God damn it, that sucks though, man. But like that movie bombed so hard, and I think that the same thing with what's his name, um, Army Hammer, that was in the Lone Ranger. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So hard, it, it was a career killer, and that that's that's my theory anyway on what happened to Billy that's Zane. So weird though, because like, but at least with Army Hammer, he's still enjoying like some kind of success in the indie. Yeah. World. You know, you, you can't even say that about Billy Zane. Billy Zane's like getting these like. He was in a couple of HBO movies, I think. Like he's in yeah. one movie called Head Above Water, with his, which is really oh, good. Oh, I tell. Yeah, Cameron Diaz. It's a good uh, Cameron film. Diaz, yeah. It's a good film. It's funny. Uh, that, that was, I think that was, I believe that was the first movie I saw Cameron Diaz in. I think. Really, I saw her. It was, uh, <clears throat> she was in The Mask for me. That was the first movie I saw her in. Was The Mask. Take that back. You're nope. Yeah. Well, right. See, that's when she was still young and a little, a little thicker, if you will. Yeah. Um, yes. To me, that's when she looked her, you know, prettiest. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. Like and she. Something about up, Mary. You can keep that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, a life less ordinary with Ian McGregor. That one was really good too. Um. But yeah, um, like now we're going down the Cameron Diaz rabbit. Again, the the red <laughs> rabbit motherfucker. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Exactly. Because um, I, I tried to write that in the description, like, "Yo, man, we're going all over the place, dude. We're going to crazy yeah. town." Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But again, Demon Knight. It's, it's 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 a lot of fun, man. It's 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 a. Uh, it's it's such a great movie. Like I think it's a solid oh, horror movie, man. It's, I agree. You know? We talked about the the Scream Factory release. Yeah, that's, that's right. we have not brought up before. Like is as as the Scream Factory release because well, the I DVD think, was bare bones that had fucking uh, 
Nothing on it. It had some foreskin. No, That's what nothing at all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that trailer. I hate that shit when they do that. Oh, man. Like, I remember, I think Demon Knight came out over two years ago now. I think it came out in 2017. Um, Either 2017. What are you talking about? The shout? Or the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Screen Factory edition. Like, either came out in 2017 or late, late 2016. Okay. Um, did it do it justice? Were there a lot of special features? Yes. Okay. Screen okay. Factory, Factory does not chintz you yeah. on that at all. Like you, you get what you pay for. Not yeah. to mention like you know Screen Factory's artwork is fucking incredible. It's gorgeous. Oh. oh it's man. so it's 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 something that horror and comic book fans can salivate over. Yeah. You know, and the the cool the other cool thing is too is when you buy the you know a copy of whatever Scream Factory you get. Let's just say you know you get Demon Knight. Yeah, the option of keeping you can flip the booklet like the you know the little the little sleeve. You can flip mm-hmm. it so either you can have the awesome artwork that Scream Factory has, or you can flip it to yeah, the original yeah. artwork, which yeah. is awesome too. Which There's I a have couple of that, that yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Dude. There's the torso one is the one I have my eye on right now because it's yeah. uh the new artwork or the original 70s poster and uh oh man, uh getting a chubby sir, getting a chubby just thinking about it. <laughs> so, it yeah, it's 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 a great like all the special features on there are great. Um they had a really good like kind of retrospective on shooting the movie and where everybody was at, at that point in time. And Billy Zane talks about that. It's still his favorite role. Oh, what really? of the roles that that's he's ever awesome. done. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. that's that, really that cool. was, that was super cool. I was like, man, I'm glad that he feels that way because a lot of other people feel that way too. Well, you can tell he's yeah. having fun, man. You can tell like, he's, he's just, he's hamming it up, dude. Like it's yeah, it's exactly. Like and when uh, he's on screen, you can't take your fucking eyes off the guy. Like you know. Yeah, no, it's so it's totally true. And that's actually that feature Ed is where he talks about that he improv the sponge coming out of his mouth. So yeah. cool. That's so cool. That's so cool. <laughs> I know, right? It's, <clears throat> it's, yeah, <laughs> like, it's always the little shit, man. It's always the little shit. <laughs> like um but yeah, like now, since I think we've we've covered almost our complete basis on, on on Demon Knight, we talked about a lot of stuff. I mean, I'll say, uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, we like the movie. You can tell we like the movie. Um, yeah, we love them. I I, I yeah. think Mike is putting it mildly. <laughs> like, we yeah, love true. Because yeah, I've seen this movie a lot, man. Like, I had to revisit it a couple weeks ago because I hadn't seen it in about probably 15 years. But when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, I damn near wore my copy out, man. Like, I used oh, to watch it all yeah, the time. Yeah, every time that it would pop up on sci-fi, I would watch it on there. You know, like, I would watch it pretty much any time it came on. And I almost had the poster, but some guy got it before me. Oh, dude, like, I would love it. Video shop. Uh, well, because it's look at the, the cover art's gorgeous, man. It's really it is. You That's know. like I still think that is one of the greatest pieces of of like art in movies of all that, time. Uh, that and Darkman poster. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Which they're Dude, both from. Like, holy shit! It's <laughs> like, just gorgeous to look at. I love that poster. It so. really is. So, but, all right, uh, buddy of mine, Brad Terenzi. Hey, Brad, if you're listening. Had the soundtrack. Mm, just this, he came over one night, man, because we both played guitar. So he would come over and we'd just jam out all night. Well, he had his CD book and he's like, oh, hey, you ever seen Demon Night? I'm like, yeah. Why aren't we watching it right now? And uh, he was <laughs> like, I have the soundtrack. And I'm like, what? And yeah. I fucking, I think I bought it the that week or the week after, man. Sold. Sold. That's- so that that's that's your uh, that's your story of how you got the soundtrack. Yeah, that and the crow, both those yes. CDs. Oh, those yeah. warped yeah. my fragile right. little mind. Let me tell you. Yeah, same here. Um, <laughs> and it, like, Kill, Kill, Kill. Yeah. like, oh my God, Pantera. Uh, yes. Oh God. 
like, oh my god. Okay, so yeah, here we go. I remember I saw the movie yeah. and I heard the filter song "Hey Man, Nice Shot," you know, and I'm like, that's a really cool song. Badass. Like, fucking yeah. baseline just kills, man. Uh, yeah. Oh. No, 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 no. Yeah, like. And, and it sets so, that tone for the scene because the cars are gearing up. You hear the engines run. It's and, amazing. And man. I love the atmosphere of that song too. Like, uh, yeah. like the, I really love a lot of like the echo effects that are in the song, and and that's like the demo version of that song. Yeah, and it's I, different from the, yeah. That's right, that's right. Better than the studio version on the album itself. It's more raw, I think. Um, it, it is. That's that's absolutely. a that's a, that's you know like. I remember going on YouTube and scouring every like version of the song I could find. Like I kept getting the studio version. Like, no, I want the one from fucking Demon Knight. That's not good enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so I, I love that song. And I, I think literally a week, maybe two weeks tops, mm-hmm. I got the soundtrack and I got it at Sound Exchange in Brandon. But my came more. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> I was doing extra chores around the house, sir. So I was like, Mom, Mom, we got to go to Kmart. God damn it, Gregory. Mom, Mom. That yeah. was that was definitely my allowance, like, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I, I remember Took I got trash my... out twice in the same night. Just don't tell my mom. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I still remember what track number Hey Man Nice Shot was. Track I think eight. It was the first. Was it eight? I thought it was the first one. Yeah. It was yeah. A, oh, Cemetery Gates was the first one. Yeah, That's right. The first track. Like, okay, right. And basically what happened was like when my sister's boyfriend's brother at the time, he would would sleep in the room with me, like, and we would listen to that soundtrack going to bed. Oh, and man. he would be like, Okay, how about we just do this? I know you love the Hey Man Nice Shot song. Why don't we go and just pick certain songs? And, you know, or, or like listen to the entire album. And that was before I was like fully aware of the full album policy. And, uh, gotcha. you know, so like I remember eventually I did kind of burn myself on the burn myself out on the filter song where I'm like, I want to check out the radio had it. And then MTV was playing. Yeah, you know, so it exactly. Was, it was all over the place. I still, yeah. I still love the song. You I know, still listen but, to it all the time. Yeah, same that. here. And, and I was like, okay, short bus. Great album. I listened to Under uh, today. Fucking, oh my God. Oh, you, I, I listened to Short Bus like a couple of months ago, actually. It was I've the first that time I listened to that, that oh, album in a long time. Um, but then, you know, Pantera Cemetery Gates, Megadeth's uh, Di- Diadem. It's like never the, seen. Which Tonight We Murder. With fucking, oh, oh, no, that's Ministry. Never mind. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Love that song too. Um, Ministries tonight we murder Sepultura's Calicia. Yes, uh, Calicia's on that. That's right. Uh, God damn it. Uh, we're uh, fuck, we're metalheads. Audience, we're metalheads. Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, <laughs> Gene Heads, uh, my misery. That's but right. Basically, so to make a long story short, that album is, and I could speak for both of us on this, was it's our gateway to music. Like yeah, all day yeah. long. Like. Both of us are, you know, pretty, you know, we're pretty much metal guys. Like I, I would I, still it, listen to metal if I hadn't acquired that album, but I would have come into I contact so with things different. differently and different I, times. Yes, yeah, no, I I couldn't agree with you more because like I think Demon Knight, like I I was exposed to it already. You know, yeah. but Demon Knight was like my gateway. You know, it wasn't somebody else turning it on to me. It was my own kind of journey where that and the Crow soundtrack, where it was like, which ironically, both of them had Pantera, you know. That's and, right. That's right. Uh, you know, like, uh, and I would I, even say this, the Cure song on the the, yes. the Crow soundtrack. I, I really dig the, that, that Cure song. My the Cure, mm, I like that song. Every night I burn. Oh man, great stuff, great stuff. It yeah. really is. Like, yeah. You know? But and then that opened up to um, Stone Temple Pilots because I went out and bought Core and yeah. Purple because of that CD. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think, uh, what other band on that soundtrack that? Oh made, shit, what is it? Uh, Violent uh, Funds. A lot of bands, man. Yeah, there, there's uh, man, like I, it'll. But, but like, um. 
And the Thanks. Nails song, they covered Joy Division. Holy oh. shit, does Reznor own that song? Oh. Oh, I love that song. But yeah, yeah basically, <laughs> like, yeah. those yeah. two soundtracks are the reason, are a big part of the reason why I'm in a metal band myself. And yeah, why. That's right. Hey, mix a metal singer, kids. <laughs> And I'll say this. I want to do a, a honorable mention to Judgment Night because that's another soundtrack that oh, blew my yes. nuts off. <laughs> Judgment dude. Night! Like, ah, fucking yeah. Onyx and Biohazard. What is what is this? Like, <laughs> oh, Yeah, which Biohazard's on uh, the Demon Knight soundtrack. That's right. Too. Fucking Biohazard. God damn it. Love so, Biohazard. And then, and then also another honorable mention, Last Action Hero. That was a great perfect. soundtrack, too. I, had soundtrack. I knew ACDC was on it because they're all throughout that fucking movie. That's like, the- you know, it's like that's that that's the popular song on that album, that that fucking shitty Def Leppard song. But there are so many other great bands on that soundtrack. They've got two Alice in Chains songs on there, Anthrax. Um, Anthrax, Megadeth, motherfucker. Megadeth, like. Had, I should check had, that. See, I should check that soundtrack out, man, because I'm I'm big, drawing big, a blank. Big, big. It's got wow. my favorite Megadeth song on there of all time, which is funny because it was never on an actual Megadeth album. Um, it's called Angry Again. I, okay. I, like, my favorite and- Korn song is not on a CD, but it's on I Know What You Did Last Summer soundtrack. Yeah. Crowd? They, they, I, I that. That, stuff. that Machine Head song, My Misery off Demon Knight, that's not yeah, on yeah, a yeah. Else. It's a beast song. <clears> Something that didn't make Burn My Eyes. And um, their their first album, and they were like, oh, well, let's just fucking give it to the Demon Knight soundtrack. Like, man, that's such a badass song. Like, there's so yeah, many. Be careful, this doesn't turn into a metal show, man. Because yeah, I know, right? Listen, I'm I'm right there with you, brother. I'm right there with you, man. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, yeah, so that's good. That's another mm-hmm. topic that we could, you know, you yeah. know, talk but about. But again, it's one of those movies where. It's got a boss soundtrack, dude. The soundtracks, tons, man. Like, it's just, <laughs> and that, it has rap on it. That's what's awesome. Because, oh, dude, why haven't we brought this up either? Like, listen, I I'm a '90s believe- kid, brother. So I love old school gangster rap. All right, give me N.W.A. Give me fucking Ice Cube, Predator, One, Two, Three, and I come with the with. I still, ah. Oh man, like, like let's but let's the talk music. Suicide. What is it? Let's talk about 1-800-SUICIDE. The music is – it's real melodic, and it's like – it's almost soothing, man. Dude, it is. Like, And it goes with, so I, against the subject matter. It, <laughs> it is, dude. Like, because here's the thing. When I would come – because I'm in a heavy band, obviously. So oh, when, I, when I when I get shit, out of – Your shit fucking rips faces off, son. It's fucking <laughs> – it's good stuff, man. It's good stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, like – um. But when I get out of practice, the last thing in the world I want to listen to is something super heavy after I've been playing super heavy music for like two hours, two or three hours. So I would put in the the Demonite soundtrack and I would put on fucking 1-800-Suicide and just jam that on my way home. Badass tune. Oh, my God. This was like three years ago. Like, like three or four years ago, like that's I was like because I found the Demon Knight soundtrack. Ironically enough, again at Sound Exchange, the original place I bought it when I was a kid. It was meant to be. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> meant like, to be. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I yeah, but like um, I you know I I was I would just drive home because I had a like an hour and a half drive because my dad lived in almost Tampa or whatever. And oh, give away a location. Yeah, and I was oh shit. Well, oops. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> You're fucking Florida guy. But I practiced down Polk County, like yeah. over near the Bartow area, which that's an hour and a half away at least. That's a ride, um, dude. That's a ride. Yeah, it it was definitely a ride. Like, and so I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna, you know, I'm I'm gonna be dry. I'm gonna be on the road for at least an hour and a half. I need to. How many times you listen to that song in a row? Oh, dude. I couldn't tell you. I seriously couldn't tell you. I used to you. roast it out at like six times, bro. Like, I would, uh, oh, what? Dude, I, would, I would go back and forth between that, Hey Man, Nice Shot, and occasionally it would be Tonight We Murder. Mm. And then like, and then like there was nights where I was like, I need my Stabbing Westward album too. 
you know, like I need, I need to have that in rotation because stabbing westward was like, I, I don't want to say it was heavy, but it was, it was. I liked his industrial. Like I got into it because of nails. It had an industrial so. edge to it. It had kind of, it, it did kind of have a heavy edge to it, Absolutely. but it was metal, you know. But but like. Um, or darkest days I, out, dude. I wore that season. Yeah. Dude, dude, yeah, I know, I know. So did I. Like, <laughs> like. Good stuff. Um, Good stuff. But yeah, like the the Demon Knight soundtrack was is, pivotal. I think in molding. Some it's, of my musical taste. It's all oh, same. Yeah, absolutely. Like yeah. <clears throat> it, it, it almost rivals the movie. You know, like because yeah, you know, so and good. that Pantera song, Cemetery Gates, the intro is beautiful. It is. Like, it is. Dimebag. Like, oh, dude, I'm still pissed. He got fucking killed, mother. I know. So, God, God, fucking you know. sucks. But, but, but like. He, it's a beautiful intro, man. The whole song's pretty. Even the heavy parts, they're they're oh, pretty. Cool. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it really. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's the first time everybody anybody's ever said a heavy part is pretty. <laughs> yeah, but it's just it's it's really good, man. Like it just jams. It fucking. <laughs> bah. I ask you this: Would you say uh, blood has been shed is pretty? <laughs> All right. If if you want your face melted off, um, listen to blood has been shed. Because uh, I had no idea Howard was capable of some feats like that. That was just, that was brutal, man. I was, I was like, holy I, shit, what is it? I sent you that, and you're like, holy fucking shit, that's amazing. Liz was in the other room, and she's like, what in the hell? And I'm like, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. Well, yeah, hey, but that's what this show is about. We, we like extreme things. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> like, yeah. even even if it's not just movies it's it's music too like we we like i mean well okay kirk hammett was on an episode of this podcast that i listened to called the josta show it's the singer from hate breeds podcast mm -hmm. and they were talking about how horror and metal are very wow. very closely related they, you yeah, know they go hand in hand it's, absolutely lend themselves to each other li yeah yeah and literally <clears throat> And like they're you know they're they're companions yeah you and know? every so like, often a movie will come out and they'll put the soundtrack out and they'll you know capitalize on it um yeah jason freddie versus jason was a big one oh, uh, god i yeah. wish that i could put that in my 90s era because that's just how great that soundtrack is because it, it's so many of my favorite bands are on that soundtrack yeah. so even many. el nino i love el nino I love El Nino. Oh, and, dude, I love El Nino, Kamira. Mm -hmm. Like, Kamira is... This was uh, Slipknot, I think Spine Shanks on that yeah, bitch. Yeah, like, Spine Shank is on yeah, there. Yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, you know, like, uh, oh my God, like, uh, Seven Dust is on there. There's there's good shit on that soundtrack. I mean, almost every band on there slams, you know. Um, I remember I caught that in high school, worth. dude. Fucking loved it. Holy shit. Too, oh, close man. To, hey, too close to that. Oh man, so good, so good. I, I remember. Well, here um, I'm gonna stop recording because I can. We can chop it up. I can fucking. I'm getting a little better at it now, if you will. So. Uh, you want me to do the outro? Yeah, if you want, yeah, because I can edit it. You know. So. Uh, All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, for the Rabbit Hole Drive-In Theater. We will red see you. Red Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> now you fucking did it. Ah, uh, do, do you want to do it? Ticket. I'll if you want, I'll do it. I'll, I'll fucking okay. need this fucking train wreck. All right, guys. So, uh, <laughs> oh man, that was fun. <laughs> you want to tell them that the next episode is gonna be uh, we're doing RoboCop next, aren't oh, we? Oh man, okay. It, it's kind of fun. All right, yeah. So, all right, we talked about Demon Knight and everything else under the sun. The next episode, we're going to be really fucking geared up because uh, we're talking RoboCop. People. Yes, sir. Uh, in old Detroit, Omni Consumer Products. Yeah. The funny thing is, uh, well, I don't know. I'll, I'll save the cat thing for the next episode. Yeah. Pro uh, yeah. It's probably. Good. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I'll, I'll save it. I'll save it. Because that blew my mind when we found out. Yeah, uh, same here. 
So, and yeah, so we'll talk RoboCop. We'll talk Nancy Allen because she was a babe back in the day. And Peter Weller. Love Peter Weller. You know? Yes. And uh, what, what the hell is his name? It's not Connell O'Cochran, because that's from Halloween 3. I, oh, yeah. Dan O'Hearley, that's his name. Da. You know. <laughs> nice shooting, son. What's your name? Murphy. Love that movie. <laughs> anyway, all right. Anyway, anyway. So, uh, all right. So, this is uh, Red Rabbit. Drive in. Drive through. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> son of a bitch. Eh. Okay, this is the Red <laughs> There you go. Just, <laughs> okay. this is just the flush rabbit. the toilet. Like, <laughs> this is yeah, the we're red getting there. Rabbit trying to theater. get through the outro. <laughs> this is the Red Rabbit Drive In Theater, and we will see you for the next episode. And we are doing RoboCop. RoboCop. That's right. So, uh, stay out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot, man. We'll hit you up next time. <laughs> Welcome to the Red Rabbit Drive-In Theater with my co-host, Slinky Shallow, and yours truly, Mick Soiler. (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit, that's amazing. (laughs) Just run with it, man, because that's funny. (laughs) Should we we leave it like that? (laughs) Yeah, that's funny, dude. Mick Soiler. That's like a wrestler name, bro. (laughs) Weighing in at 216 pounds. Fuck it, you know. <laughs> so, I can't, right. now I kind of want I kind of want to start doing the proudly presents thing, like make that more of a thing on the show now. Like, yeah, yeah you know, that'd be kind of cool. Like, you know, it's it's kind of an homage because we love Demon Knight so much. Oh, you know?